Hey everyone, it's Lindsay from My Crafty Plants. Welcome back to my channel, or if you are new here, welcome. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new Laurel Denise 2024 planners. I'm so excited to have this. I have one of the new dated horizontal planners in here. The 2024 Laurel Denise Planner Collection is already live and up on her website. And as of the filming of this video, none of the covers or anything is sold out yet. So you can check out this collection now if you are looking to get a Laurel Denise Planner for next year. I did purchase this planner myself, but I did receive a discount. Laurel offered the planners to all of the affiliates ahead of the launch at a discount. I am a really excited and there's plenty of time left before I'm going to start using this. This is going to be my content planner for 2024. I currently use a Laurel Denise undated vertical. I have that off to the side so we can take a look for comparison's sake. And this planner has just worked out so well for me this year. So I wanted to continue on with it. But based on how I was using the, the weekly space in the planner, I thought the horizontal might be a better fit for next year. I am a member of the Laurel Denise affiliate team. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who shopped using either my link or my discount code during the launch. It really means so much to me and it does help support this channel. So just truly from the bottom of my heart, thank you. If you are still looking to shop from Laurel Denise, I do have a discount code, which I'll put across the screen. And I also have my links and the codes for Laurel Denise and everything else down in the description below. So let's jump in. I have already opened this, but I tried to preserve as much of the unboxing experience as possible. If you want to see the original unboxing, you can head over to my Instagram at mycraftyplants. I've got a unboxing reel up there. So this is the box that it came in. So, so gorgeous. I absolutely love this color. Just so bright and fun with like the little floral doodles. It did mail inside like a FedEx bubble mailer envelope, but I just ordered the planner. There are some ex new accessories and different things like that also available. There's also a mini planner, which I do not have, and, and a full Leo, so check out her website to see everything. But all I have here today is the 2024 horizontal planner. So when you open up the box, which is again, just so, so gorgeous, it has this custom tissue paper and then this little business card was taped right on top. It says planners for the way you think and it's got their kind of contact information on it. And then this, the planner itself was wrapped in bubble wrap, but I did take it out of the bubble wrap, but that is really the only difference here between my original unboxing and now. So this cover color is called Strawberry Jam. I just thought it was a really, really cute and fun little pattern. It's got like all of these little teeny tiny uh, diamonds and different things on it in this really fun like pinkish red color. And like I said, this is the Horizontal Weekly Edition and this is a dated planner. The Laurel Denise planners are available in horizontal or vertical and, the and there's a few cover options for each, but you can't get this cover on the vertical. This cover is only on the horizontal, although there is a fairly similar one, color-wise at least, called Lollipop if you're looking for something in this kind of theme, but in the vertical version of the planner. These planners retail for $59. And as I said, as of my filming of this video, none of the cover colors are sold out and they have a bunch of different, they have a handful of different options for each of the layouts, some of which are like colorful and patterned and some of which are more neutral or solid color. And the mini planners, by the way, are $49. So when you open it up, you have a little pocket here and then the little background of the planner. She likes to mix like really bold colors and patterns together. That's very much the Laurel Denise aesthetic and the inside of the planner is different depending on the cover that you choose. So again, just really pretty. You do get two bookmarks right at the front. They are clip in so you can pull them out and move them along the pages. The first one says you are here and it is a ruler with a straight edge and rounded corners. If you have seen me play and you know that I love to use my rulers to draw boxes as stencils, different things like that. I'm all, I've always got a bunch of rulers handy and I really like the shape of this one. And then the second one, which I'm so excited about, has this kind of wavy pattern on the edge. It's a plain one. There's no ruler. There's no like lines for measuring on this one, but it says you are also here. And like I said, I cannot wait to use this in my planner as a stencil. Just super, super fun there. So those do pop in. You can put them on whatever pages you could, you're you using. So you could put one on your monthly spread and one on your notes in the back. And yeah, there are a couple of changes from last year, or at least from the, from the undated line, but I don't think that there's very many changes. 
I don't have a dated planner for last year, but I do, like I said, I do have an undated vertical right here that I that I do use. So we can look at that for comparison. Okay, you have your cover page. I'm gonna keep zooming in and out because this planner is one, it's quite large. And two, the main thing with a Laurel Denise planner, if you're not familiar, is that it enables you to see your month and your week and some dashboard space all at the same time, all at once. So I love this because it really lets you kind of spread out on a desk and look at all of the things all at once with it's been really, really helpful to me. The individual boxes, however, are a little bit small. Laurel Denise, who is the founder of the company, has the teeny tiniest, cutest, perfect little handwriting. Uh, I do not, my handwriting is pretty large. So for me, this works super, super well as a one area of life planner. It's fantastic for content planning. I felt like before when I was doing my content planning, I was always flipping back and forth between, between a monthly spread and, and weekly or daily items and also dashboard notes on different things that I was working on. So this planner just made absolute sense. I also think that this would make like a really great academic planner or a work planner, just any area of your life where you feel like you're looking at a calendar, a daily or weekly to-do list and different notes or dashboards, metrics, whatever you think. That is the area of life where I think a Laurel Denise planner could be really, really helpful. Again, it just allows you to see a bunch of different layouts all at the same time and think through things in a kind of cohesive manner. So there are some initial pages at the front. You've got a list of holidays and then just like mini calendars that say goals and things to remember. And then all the way on the other end of the page here, it does say special events. A few more things about the planner. One, literally every dimension in the planner, Laurel lists that on the website. So you can look up like the size of every single box on, on the planner. It's a really, really thoughtful listing and I do really appreciate that. So she has on the website under every planner description, a whole section of dimensions on everything. You can also choose between Monday start and Sunday start for this planner and which one I absolutely love because I love a Monday start, which is what I have. And when you get a Monday start, it Monday starts your month and also your week. If you get a Sunday start, it's going to Sunday start both your month and your week as well. So I have the Monday start here. So again, my monthly calendar and my weekly calendar are going to start on that Monday. When open, the planner is, and I'm going to just zoom you out here so you can see this is my other planner, my other Laurel Denise planner right behind it. So when open, the planner is 25 and a half inches wide across and then nine and a quarter inches high. So closed, it's 12.75 inches and then open, it's gonna open, it's gonna be really quite large on your desk. But again, it enables you to look at all the things at once. So all the way on the left-hand side, you have your monthly space. Then in the middle here, you have your weekly space, which has a, uh, again, I have the horizontal layout here. And then it does have a weekly sidebar still that runs all the way the length of the page, which I really, really like. And then at the back, you have your dashboard space. So what you do is each week you flip through the planner pages. I will zoom in and show you this in more detail. And then when you get to the end of the month, you hit in hidden behind that, you've got this, this big dot grid section of the page and then a space that says to do this month and has just a big white blank space. So you can see half of that dash, dot grid dashboard space and all of this monthly listing space, even while you're looking at the week. And then you can flip to the back here and you have like a little bit of hidden space as well. And then new for this year, there's a habit tracker now listed on the back, a monthly habit tracker. So there is space in here to mark seven different habits, all 31 days of the month. I think this is really cool. It's a nice addition. For me personally, since I use this as my content planner, I would have preferred to have that as blank dot grid paper, which is what it was in the undated planner, just because I would use that to put notes and thoughts or to do's around like sensitive information, things where I couldn't share it publicly on social media. So like anything with an embargo date, stuff like that. So I'm gonna miss that space, but I think for a wider audience, having a habit tracker there probably makes sense. And for now, I'll probably just use sticky notes and use that the same way anyways. But anyway, so zooming back in again, we can take a closer look at what the individual sections there look like. Let's start with the monthly calendar here. So again, this is dated, so it does look slightly different than the undated one, which I 
already have here, which the overall layout is the same. It's just got like more, you know, dating and the name of the month, etc., on it. So it's got a really small typeface here. It says January 2024. It's got a big one up on the side and it's got a glance ahead for February. And then you have your days of the week here. Again, Monday start, but Sunday start is an option. It does have some holidays printed on it as well. And the monthly calendar boxes are one inch by 1.375 five inches. Again, if you're looking for any of the spec details on any of the boxes and I don't mention it, definitely check the Laurel Denise website. Literally everything is on there. Then you can scooch over to the middle section of the planner, see your monthly calendar still visible, and you've got your week running down the center, split between two pages. So the first week is printed on this tab paper. The pages with the monthly calendar and also the notes pages, the tabs, this is actually a thin card stock, so it's really, really hardy. It writes on really nice. You can use literally any markers. I've even done like a light press of a Sharpie before, and it's still where it's not gonna bleed through. It is a really nice, like lightweight cardstock. It says it's 120 pound, which is not 120 GSM. 120 GSM paper is 80 pound paper, so it is a thicker paper on those tabs. And then the paper on the inside is 80 pound, which is 120 GSM paper. So really thick, nice paper. Same on the for the inside pages here that flip. Same paper weight as Moxie Life and as Erin Codron. And it is a pretty neutral paper, not too tooth. It's not too toothy and not too not too smooth. I would put it very similar to the Moxie Life paper. Just a nice hardy. You can use dot markers on it. You can use any markers that you use in your regular other planners you will be able to use in here. And overall, just a very neutral feeling paper. So again, on that weekly bar here, you have part of the horizontal layout here and it says one and then it's got the three letter abbreviation for the, the, the day of the week listed next to the date. Love that 2024 starts on January 1st. Anytime I'm looking at a 2024 planner from like now until forever, you will hear me mention that. Um, again, the first week printed up here. And then on this side of the planner, on the right hand side of the page, it does repeat the day of the week again. So it just has the letter listed, not the full number and everything like that. And then it says to do today. And then it says this week on the side. So you could just easily cover this and customize it if you want. I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to be using this horizontal layout, but here is what the vertical layout looks like as well. The dated vertical does have a couple of key differences between what I'm showing here. So one is that the days of the week are actually printed in this top section right here, which when I use this is actually not usually where I put mine. I usually have mine running right here at the bob at the top of the to-do list. Um, so that that's where the days of the the week are printed in the dated version. And then this space here that says priorities in mine is actually blank now. It And it doesn't say time here anymore. And, and then this list here is doesn't have the little dots in it to make it a time. So you could use that to make a timed planner or leave it untimed and just put like checklists there, etc. And also now this runs all the way to the bottom of the page instead of saying to do today. This, this has worked really well for me. I I have really enjoyed it but just like I said I thought I end up taking notes like across the days a lot in here and I thought that because of that I might like the horizontal version better for next year so we'll see how that goes if I want to switch back to the vertical I will probably I started this planner back in April so I will have a few months to play around with the undated one if I feel like I need to if the horizontal doesn't work out for me I'm pretty good at judging planners for myself at this point and based on the way I was using the vertical this year I think the horizontal is going to be great. Anyway, so you just flip through the weeks here, you get to the back, and then you've just got the big dot grid, like I said, and the blank space over here. I love a dashboard spread. I can show you my latest one here. This is my September set up here. So this is what I've done with all of that dashboard space. I have got like some analytics tracking, some to-do listing for YouTube, a little bit more notes, and then just other things that I'm working on, other projects that I'm working on. So I find this space really, really functional. I love to divide up a dashboard space and customize it every month and then, you know, fill it in throughout the month. This is a full dated planner. So the weeks and months are going to run consecutively. So we had the last week of January that's listed in here is 22 to 28. So then the first week that you get into February is January 29th through February 4th. So again, it just continues on the same way. And the 
the habit trackers are set to line up with the exact dates. So it is February. It's a leap year this year. So we've got 29 days in February and these all, all the habit trackers here say 29 days. There's just a lot of little thoughtful details like that throughout the planner and also through the way that they're listed on the website that I just really appreciate as a, as a major planner person. So it just, it definitely has a very beautiful and luxurious feel to it. It's a good unboxing experience. And overall, it's just a really, really functional planner. I know tons of other content creators, both in the planner community and outside the planner community, really like this for content planning as well. So again, you've got all of the months in here. It runs through the end of December. And then when you get back, there is a notes section. First thing on the notes page is just like a little plan ahead with some 2025 calendars and a little bit of lined page here. And then it says yearly wins and yearly lessons on the right hand page here with lots of lined notes for that. And then you get some notes pages. So first up, we've got some graph paper with four sheets of graph paper. And then we have some dot grid paper with four pages of dot grid. And then in the back here, there's just like a little year wrap up. It says books I'm reading, things I'm listening to, happy moments, gratitude, hobbies, ways I'm moving my body, I'm excited for, I'm hopeful for. Honestly, it's cute. I would rather just have more notes pages or just not have it at all. There used to be more notes pages in the planner, but they did slim the planner down a little bit so that everything would still fit on the coil and give you a little bit of room. You can actually add pages into the coil and they have new snap-in dashboards that work just the same way that the rulers do so that you can add more pages in and customize it kind of how you like, which I think is really, really neat. On the back here is, again, you've got a repeat of that the pattern that's on the front and another packet. I would be careful with these packets Packets. They are like pretty big and they're definitely, it's, it's a, like a laminated paper, but it's definitely not super difficult to tear that. Uh, so just be careful. I don't typically use the, the folder in here. And again, this is wire O binding. Uh, I don't typically have an issue with this wire O. I think just because of the shape, the shape and the size of the planner, because I'm not like constantly turning pages in here the way I was in the daily planner, like in the day designer or anything like that. It's just a planner that mostly sits open and and then I just flip through the inside pages so that, I, and I'm never like kind of rolling it back on itself. So I don't really have any problems with this being wire O. And the coil itself is kind of like a bronzy color, uh, kind of in between a gold and a rose gold. It looks pretty similar to the coil from last year as well. So that is my new Laurel Denise planner. I'm so excited to use this. I, again, have just been loving my one from last year and definitely plan to continue on with this. Have you tried the Laurel Denise planner? Did you pick one up at launch? Are you thinking about it? Definitely let me know in the comments below or if you got one, let me know what cover you got. Thank you so much for watching. And again, just a huge thank you for all of the support during the Laurel Denise planner launch. I was just absolutely taken aback by the level of support. So really just thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching. If you have anything you'd wanna see in the Laurel Denise planner, definitely let me know in the comments down below as well. And I will try and make that happen for you. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already ready. More planner launches still to come, more planner goodness still to come. And you can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at My Crafty Plans for even more planner fun. I will talk to you all soon. Bye!